leading question today is who of Extreme X-Men do I want to put the most power into? Where do I want to put my resources when it comes to Extreme X-Men? So with Extreme X-Men, the three most important members of Extreme X-Men are going to be Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler has the most plug and play playability. There's a lot of people trying to use him in the arena. I don't particularly think he's good in the arena, but at certain levels of the arena, Nightcrawler could play into that. And in future arena metas, you might find some viability for Nightcrawler. Next up is Gambit. Gambit's a very good character. He, uh, we, A lot of us are getting diamonds on him through the uh, event that we're running right now, the, uh, the, the crappy tower that is active. So Gambit is a great character to put power into. He has that killer passive that does amazing damage. And then the next character that you want power on is Sunspot. So you want to focus on Nightcrawler, Sunspot, on, and Gambit. If you add Dazzler and Rogue to those three, you are going to have an extremely good Cosmic Crucible team. It is the best offensive mutant team that you can have is Nightcrawler, Sunspot, Gambit, Dazzler, and Rogue. Cyclops and Forge are basically really only needed for raids. And it seems like they're very good on defense. They're better defensive characters. So if you want to do like a defensive Cosmic Crucible team, it's probably going to involve Cyclops and Forge. But offensively, you want to focus on Nightcrawler, Sunspot, Gambit, Dazzler, and Rogue. So what I would do with that information is, is build up Nightcrawler, Sunspot, and Gambit to the moon. And then take Cyclops and Forge and build them to the size that they need to be for where they work. For the level of raids that you're in and then move on to the next team i guess hive mind if they ever make that thing work this is just a little psa i want to make sure that people know this and this is with every showcase campaign now because i didn't know this i might have missed one of these i don't want you to miss it go into the showcase either uh, you might even still have time for the x-men one if, if you missed it and go into test drive if you beat it it's 200,000 gold per node for a total of 600,000 gold. Now you know. I'm being asked, are tier fives on the horizon? I'm constantly being asked, okay, which tier fours can I skip? And I've got the information for you, okay? You want to know what tier fours are skippable and if tier fives are coming. First off, real simple, easy answer about tier fives. They're never coming. That's over. It's scrapped. It's done. Can you imagine the amount of work the developers would have to do to implement tier fives across the board on every character in this game? This game has simply grown to be too massive that tier fives are never going to be implemented. Instead of tier fives, what we have is the ability to awaken abilities. Those are tier fives. And it's going to be very specific to very specific characters. Pretty much only legendaries at this point. Maybe we'll see them for individual characters. I don't, I don't really know. But as far as like this whole new system of tier fives coming in, I it's not something that I would foresee. Uh, of course, that's subject to change. I mean, there are no rules. They can do whatever they want. But um, I don't think that's coming. So, so what some, uh, one person said that, oh, they'll loosen up on tier fours once they introduce tier fives. I don't think that's happening. And they don't seem to be loosening up on tier fours. And I know this is a huge, huge problem with Marvel Strike Force, and it super, super sucks. But there's not much that can be done about it. I was talking with my chat, and I was telling them, no team have you been able to skip tier fours on since Shadowlands. And I raged about this years ago when it happened. But Shadowlands was one of the first teams that came in. It was a new team. And every, every bit of that team, to make that team work, you needed to do all the tier fours. And there was nothing you could skip. There was no skipping. Back in the early, early days of tier fours, some of them were pointless, like Winter Soldier's Basic. Okay? You never need to tier four Winter Soldier's Basic. But as soon as you got a rework and a second rework, all of his tier fours are now necessary if you want rebirth to work. What can you skip? All right. The general rule of thumb about tier fours when it comes to skipping is you can skip the basic and only the basic. Some people are getting by on using uh, their tier fours only on passives and ultimates. 
And for a lot of teams, that works. Because for a lot of teams in the game, especially teams that aren't raid teams, and you're basically going to use them for one fight with one round where they get to use their ultimate and then the fight is over. Like, did we really ever need to tier four Icarus's special when all you ever use is his ultimate in, say, Cosmic Crucible? If you're doing Icarus right, you're only ever using his ultimate. So you only ever need to tier four his ultimate. So there are some characters where you can do that. However, Extreme X-Men is a raid team. You're going to use their ultimates. You're going to use their specials. And you're probably going to end up using their basics. However, if you really don't have tier fours, which many of you don't, because they are never going to loosen up on them, apparently. I thought it would have happened years ago, but it just doesn't happen. It's a continued choke point. It's probably the worst bottleneck in the entire game. I know some people are going to say gold, but I've said tier fours and I've said it for years. I'm only now at a point playing daily, hardcore, obsessively for over five years where I have enough tier fours where a new team comes in and I can just barely upgrade all their tier fours. There are only a handful of tier fours in the game that are truly, truly skippable. I mentioned one with like Winter Soldier. You never need to do his basic. Another good example is Gwenpool. When on the planet would you ever use Gwenpool's basic? This is not a character that is good in raids. This is not a character that's even good in solo player content. This is a character that only gets to take two turns ever in Cosmic Crucible. If you've made it to a third turn with new warriors, you have screwed up the attack. You have picked the wrong target. New Warriors needs to win within two turns. So all of their basics are skippable at this point. Pretty much every character's basic is skippable with the exception of a select few characters where their safety attack or follow-up attack or assist attack comes into play more often than it normally would. Um, Infinity Watch comes to mind. That's a good one because they're always assisting each other. If you're in room number one, whatever characters you're using for room number one in Cosmic Crucible, where there are a lot of assists happening, then the tier four on the basic will make sense. It'll give you some extra damage. Not a lot, not as much as you think it would. Um, Astonishing X-Men was a good uh, team where you could point out for this, where they were assisting each other a lot. So those tier fours on their basics was kind of a decent investment. However, not at all anymore. What you want to do is if you are really, really in need of tier fours, you want to wait, stock up your tier fours, and then ambush the meta where it is. You can't catch up. Um, it would be almost impossible without lots of money to catch up to a player like myself who basically has every tier four on every character in the game with the exception of really old characters or uh, a character that just really not didn't ever get the right treatment like Winter Soldier where their tier four on their basic is just like something absurd like plus five piercing that probably doesn't even honestly apply to their safety follow-up assist attack or whatever you want to call it. Um, Mockingbird, I, like war characters, I skip tier fours on all the time and then my war characters don't work and I don't care because I don't play in hardcore wars. Um, there's a lot of characters out there where their tier fours only apply to war defense. I would never up upgrade those. Like if a tier four only works on war defense, I think Emma is a good example. Emma Frost has a tier four where it only triggers on war defense for the lifetime of this character. I have never upgraded her passive because it only triggers on war defense and I just don't care. All right, everybody, that's the short answer. I, I hope this information can get out there because, guys, there are no skippable tier fours. There really aren't. Uh, the only thing you can do is you can focus on passives and ultimates, and you'll probably be okay. And I want to say ultimates because it's basically whatever attack the character uses first, whether that be their special or their ultimate. So if the character uses their special first, then maybe upgrade the special and not the ultimate. Like, you probably could have gone the whole lifetime of Gambit without upgrading his ultimate because how many attacks do you even get to use it in? 
now we're using it more because he's a raid character. But back in the day, if you were just using this as a Cosmic Crucible team, most of the time you'd have the battle won well before Gambit used his ultimate. So then what was the point of it? So you could just go for his passive, you could upgrade his special, and then you could be done with that. So there's definitely some scenarios where um, you can just upgrade passives and the first attack that the character uses, and then if that character is doing everything it needs to do, stop upgrading them, stop upgrading their passives. Uh, so I, I've gotten this question a couple of times now, and and I, I, don't, I don't really know how to answer this, but I'm going to try. And the question is, why am I so dark? And I think what he's trying to ask is like, why why is it like this why why are you so different from everybody else what is going on here and i i don't really know how to answer that guys um i've been like this from a very early age i've never as far as the way i dress with lots of black and whatnot i've i've never been a fan of of uh, brightly colored clothing i don't know it, it happened at a very very early age um i grew my hair out at a very early age, which got me kind of ostracized from a lot of social groups, which was weird, but I was still adamant that I keep it. I don't know why. I, I watched a lot of professional wrestling when I was a little tyke, and my, my favorite professional wrestlers all had long hair, so I was like, I'll have long hair, not realizing that it would make me such a target. You know, no one else watched professional wrestling at my school, right? Um, and, and so nobody really got the look I was going for. They just thought that I was odd. And then for some reason that made me defiant and not wanting to conform at all. And I guess that's kind of what leads us here. I have this streak in me to just not conform. And the more pressure there is on me to conform, the more I will try to rebel against that because I don't know, perhaps I never grew up. And at this point, I think I'm still just being stubborn. I refuse to get to grow up. This is what I like. I like 12 foot skeletons and I like dark lighting and I like purple and black and green and 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 uh, venom and, you know, uh, zombie uh, Galactus. And uh, it's, it's what I like. And I surround myself with those things and I feel no desire to change what I like just to fit some kind of worldview that someone else would have of me. I'm a parent, right? If other parents were to come down there, a lot of people would be like, well, what are you doing down here? And I would just tell them to get the fuck out of my house because I just don't give a shit anymore, guys. Uh, once you get to a certain age, maybe you just stop caring. Maybe I never did care. And uh, I guess that's why I'm so dark because I want to be because that's how I th those, these are the things I gravitate towards. I like horror movies. I like aggressive, dark music. Um, that's what I'm kind of into. I don't know. It, 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 it speaks to me. Uh, there you there you go. I hope that clears it up. Stop what you're doing, baby, and follow Mr. Hargrave from Parts Unknown, if you will, baby. Watch another video or be cast.